Hi there, my name's Jake Jackson. I'm a the owner of Gravity PDF uh, and one of the head developers. Uh, and today I'm with Roby Lawrence uh, from Bearded Friends. And um, we're just gonna have a stroll down memory lane, uh, chat about how we first met and, and how Roby heard about Gravity PDF and and see how it's grown over the years into what it is today um and where it's heading so um welcome roby uh thank you thank you jake no worries so <laughs> it was actually funny i was um putting together a little run sheet for this for this uh talk um and it's so interesting to have a look back at the dates so gravity pdf was first released in 2012. that's a long time ago that's I I can't even can't even remember what I was doing into I was probably fixing someone's printer <laughs> back in 2012. <laughs> yeah, um it's it's so strange you just kind of you put your head down and you just f so focused on where you're heading that that um it's sometimes you you need to take a step back and look at the big picture and see where you've see where you've come from just how far you've come. I think that's probably around about the time I actually started using WordPress. So <laughs> nice. Well, Roby and I first met. Uh, it was twenty sixteen at WordCamp Sydney, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember. I think I remember seeing you on the attendees list, um, and I recognised you because you you actually live like. 40 minutes up the road from me at the time I was living in port. Um, and that's Port Macquarie. Port, port Macquarie. Yeah. Sorry for the locals call it port. Uh, but I remember at that, at that stage, um, before probably a year or two before WordCamp, I was, I was working on a client's site, doing some updates to it. And I saw, Oh, the, you know, as you do as a web developer, you're always looking at who the previous site's made by and, you know, you look into them. And so I was, I was like, oh, um, Blue Liquid Designs, oh, this, which is Jake's previous de web dev business name. And I, um, uh, I was, where am I? <laughs> um, yeah, Blue Liquid Designs. And then I looked into him and I'm like, oh, this guy lives pretty close. Maybe I should, you know, get to get to know um, whoever this guy is. Um, and then, yeah, it was probably a year or two later when I saw him on the attendees list for WordCamp. And I'm like, I'm going to make a point to to make sure we, we say hi at this event. And um, and we we did. We we had a, ended up having a great time as far as I remember. I th I think it was over. Um, it was Saturday night, drinks at the bar. <laughs> um, it was like an hour in, and and Roby and I bumped into each other getting a getting a beer from the bar. Um, it was the uh, it was actually my very first WordCamp, uh, and I was what 2016. So I only I turned 30 this year, so that would have been. Uh, 25 years old at the time i remember i was so nervous to go because it was it was going to be huge lots of people uh i'm a bit anti-social sometimes uh or i was back then it's it's grown done a lot of growing since then <laughs> um but yeah it was it was so nervous uh to go to word camp and be a part of part of everything um but it was such a good experience and then i ran into roby uh, and he was like, you're that, you're the PDF guy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Uh, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I, you know, I don't even, I don't even remember what we talked about. Um, but I, I mean, it started with the, with the PDF thing because that's obviously what you did and that's, um, and then I think I, uh, we probably spent like half an hour explaining, you know, the, 
the client site that that I found you on, and we're talking about the client oh, yeah. and what you had done and what we had done, and and so I think that kind of kicked off the conversation. The um the the early days of my web development career, you look back and you go, you kind of cringe at the work you do <laughs> and you, that you charge for, and you're like, oh. <laughs> so we 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 had a bit of uh, reminiscing about that, and Roby's going, oh yeah, I've been doing all this, and I'm going, oh, I don't even want to remember that project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do I? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I suppose it's a good sign that we've grown when we look back and go, yeah, you know what? If I did that now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can see how far we've come from, from back then. So, so let's let's talk about that a bit. So, um, because you know, two thousand six, five years ago, or sixteen, sorry. Um, when was when when did you first use Gravity PDF? Um, I, I think I first stumbled across it when I was just like in my very early days of WordPress. So I was like oh, there's this whole repository of just free plugins of, that adds functionality and you don't have to pay for it. And like back then I was like, cause I was much younger, you know, not, not much, uh, much budget to spend on things to play with. So the whole free collection of things was like, and then I came across, um, you know, I'd seen a lot of good reviews, but gravity forms was a great form builder. So I'm like searching for all these add ons and I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool. Like we could, we could fix um, fix all this crap with people putting Word documents on websites and asking people to fill them out and then send them in and like we could we could just digitize this whole thing. And I think that's so I, I don't I don't know if I had a specific use case at the beginning, um, but then it was great having that knowledge that that uh, that plugin existed for for the future and so. I think one of the probably where I'm I'm where I'm using it most myself is I've just built myself a little proposal generator inside WordPress, and so you know when a, a client reads the proposal, signs and submits and stuff, then it just generates a a PDF file of the the whole contract and everything, and just emails it to to all the relevant parties. So it was streamlined that process quite a bit. And that's what you're using it for now, is it? That's what I'm using it for personally. Um, I've, I think I've set it up for a few clients just to, um, you know, just, just as a basic level of just um, not, not huge submission forms at this stage, but just, just like an A4 page of, you know, ap applying to become a member of something or, or signing up for a free event, that kind of thing. I saw your renewal payment come up just the other month and I um I went, ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Roby's been a customer for forever. <laughs> um and this was just after I was talking with Gravity Forms um community manager, James, um, who's only recently started there a few few months back, taken over that role. Um and so he proposed doing a, a certified developers week, which marks the the one year anniversary for their certified developer program, which yep. we uh, were very lucky to be a part of. Yep. Um, so this is this is going to be a video specifically for for that event. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, well, you know, Romy and I have a heap of history together. Uh, we've known each other a long time. Um, and, I mean, WordCamp Sydney was just the start, wasn't it, Roby? Yeah. As, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't feel like five years ago, but here we are. <laughs> Um, because at the time I worked in Sydney, you're actually living on the Gold Coast. I still, I yeah, think. yeah, we were actually, and had gone down to Sydney. I think that was, I think, I think that WordCamp was our only my second WordCamp, so I was still fairly new to them as well. I'd only been to, I think, the, the previous year or the or two years before they had one in uh, the Sunshine Coast. Right, that was my first, and then, but but Sydney was. Um, was a much bigger scale. Yeah, that was that was big. <laughs> For my first event, it was like, whoa, look at all the people everywhere, and yeah. it was um, it was a lot of great talk because you you just used to only seeing like people's avatars like from their shoulders up, and you're like, look at all these people that actually have legs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, and then so so you moved back to Port Macquarie not long after that. Yeah, it would have been around that time, soon after that. Because um, we had the first Port Macquarie WordPress meetup the following year in April that we co-hosted. Yeah, yeah. So it would have been we would have moved back probably the end towards the end of 2016 because I remember the um like the Christmas period spending a bit of time doing a bit of thinking and organizing of a meetup because I'm like I got back from the Gold Coast and had been going to meetups up there and I'm like oh shame there's no WordPress meetup in port I'm like stuff it I'm just gonna start one <laughs> yeah you're you're a bit of a mover and shaker when it came to getting things organized <laughs> around here you're like I'm gonna start a meetup and you got the venue sorted and and I th- I don't think I helped that much the first the first uh, time it was like show up bring some chairs and <laughs> and um, help set up a little bit but it was I mean just as appreciated I mean at, at the at the early stage there wasn't that much to set up um, it was I liked the I liked the pressure of having to have something to teach people because then I'm like I've got no choice but to learn this myself <laughs> and doing it doing more of a deep dive on the topic so it's a it's a great uh l- learning process oh yeah definitely well i i remember after that first one you went jake jake you gotta you gotta do a presentation <laughs> and i went what no i don't i don't talk I do formal speaking whatever uh, like <laughs> I'm anti-social, man. Let me, <laughs> let me just sit in the background and like, just be. And you're like, no, no, you're co-organizer. You have to contribute. <laughs> I mean, uh, all right. So I ended up going home and spending far too long putting together this presentation on, on a beginner's guide to plugin development. And I think it ended up going like an hour and a half over time. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time we we're done, I'm like, I'm all talked out. <laughs> like, I don't know if anyone got some good info insights out of this, but <laughs> hopefully you did learn something. Oh, and it's something you can use again. Maybe you can do that next month. I was actually thinking we could probably re <laughs> redo a, bu- a couple of older talks that aren't related to the post editing experience. <laughs> <laughs> that that has been a common topic. Um, but I mean, yeah, if we started back in 2017. We're now in 2021. I'm sure it's fine to go over some of the same things again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just with um, a bit of a, a refreshed kind of... Well, once we once we go back to physical meetups, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on the venue. <laughs> um, so we did, we, we did uh, meetups for, for a number of years. And then we decided, you know what? Let's let's do a regional WordCamp. That was 2019. We held the first Australian regional WordCamp Port Macquarie with us and a, a number of other very helpful people. Yeah, we we had some. We had a good amount of help, remote help from other organisers of the bigger camps, but they they guided us through the process. There was, I mean, there was still a mammoth amount of yeah i feel like we, <laughs> work we, on our end we, as well we bit off more than we could chew a little bit there but it, i mean it turned out amazing I yeah thought. yeah it went really well i'm really happy with how it went um i ended up actually speaking as well <laughs> so co-organizer and a speaker and a sponsor and a sponsor yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> uh, but that was a lot of fun it's it's with covid and everything it's been uh, it's it kind of sucks that we can't all get together now, and yeah. um, but hopefully that's all changing and we can we can jump back in soon. So um, so you mentioned you're using a Gravity PDF on your own personal site. Mm. Now that you've had more experience with it over the years, what what kind of work are you doing on the client sites with it? Um, well, I've. I've actually just um, sent a proposal to a, a client to, so they've, they, without, you know, disclosing too much client information, they, um, they have um, essentially cohorts of, of customers come through and do 
um, specific type of training. And it's, it's essentially just a, a quiz um, or it, it's, a, it's a bunch of information up front to read, you know, to learn about the job and, and what you need to do and the, the requirements and, um, and, and rules that come with it. And then afterwards there's a quiz that um, is essentially just to make sure that they've read the important bits. Um, and then at the end they hit submit and then it spits them out a, um, like a certificate of completion for the quiz. Yeah. But this was built, built back in 2014 um, and it was all custom built by um, someone who was traditionally a PHP developer, not really uh, cluey on the WordPress standards and you know the proper way of doing things. The hooks, yeah. the hooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so it's um, that uh, they came to me when they tried up updating their version of PHP beyond five point six, and the PDF generation thing broke. Um, and um, the the previous developer has moved on. He's doing got a full time job now, so he wasn't available to to fix it. So my proposed solution was, you know, maybe there's there's been a lot of um, a lot of uh, new uh, new plugins and and pre built systems that have been built since 2014. Maybe we can, you know, develop a solution with off the shelf plugins that come with their own long term support and that are regularly updated. Um, and part of that was using Gravity Forms with Gravity PDF to replace that whole, you know, quiz kind of workflow and then generate the results and the certificates at the end of the journey um, and customise it to look the same as how their current certificates look. Yeah, um, so you just did the proposal for that or you completed, you've done the job? Uh, I've I've sent through the proposal and they're, they're pretty keen on the, um, on the solution. So we're... That should be starting the next month or two. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so you actually mentioned that, you know, since 2014, a lot's changed um, in the in the plug-in world in terms of what things can do and the reliability. Being a long-time Gravity PDF user, how have you seen that evolve over time? Um, I think... I think a lot more people since then, like a lot more business owners have seen the, the viability, um, and, and, and just the way that things are going, like away from printing, away from manual documents and, and that kind of thing. And they're, they're starting to realize, um, you know, that, that digital, um, digi digital documents is, is kind of the way forward. And so the, the plug-in ecosystem is kind of seeing more and more people come on board to the concept. And so they're, you know, developing more solutions around it. It's, um, it's, um, yeah, basically there's, there's, I, I'm, and there's, and there's more awareness, I think as well around WordPress. I mean, the, the user base of WordPress back then, um, would be a fraction of what it is now. And so with the, with the awareness of WordPress comes the awareness of all the, the add-on functionality and everything else that comes with that. Yeah, well, I've definitely noticed, you know, when we first started the, the meetup, um, the different types of users we had, and then now when we're doing the meetup, it's a lot, a lot of the new people, beginners, they want to know how to DIY with WordPress and things. Yeah. Um, where uh, early on in the piece, there was a bit more technical nature, um, a bit more tech heads and developers and things coming along. Um, so yeah, we've definitely seen that that change over the years too. Um, but about, how about the software itself? Um, like the, the, the difference between the versions over the years, um, have you seen it become more stable? Um, new functionality that makes it easier? Um, and going, oh yeah, that's really great. Um, I mean, <laughs> when, I mean, when I first started using it, I was surprised at how easy it was to use. Like you just, this is a free thing. You just plug it in and you, you know, choose your template. 
and then it generates a PDF. I'm like, how, why, how is this free? <laughs> it actually started its life uh, as a developer orientated tool. So you, you did all the configuration um, in a config file, uploaded it, and then um, and then it, it would do its PDF generation thing. Right. So yeah, so I must have definitely come in after that that update with with the GUI um, because back then I wouldn't have been able to. I I was very much not a developer back then. I mean, I'm still I'm still not. I can kind of you know hack things and figure stuff out, but yeah. So that was um you came in at a good time because that that GUI release that was fifteen months in the making basically. Okay. Um yeah, I spent a long time rewriting everything from the ground up basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and had to write a migration script to migrate from the old file-based config to the new GUI config. And, um, that's when, basically when I started getting real serious about it. Um, and cause it, it started off its life as just this little part-time side project. Um, so I'd only do a little bit of work on the side every now and again. And, um, but then it started getting popular. And people started going, hang on, this is really useful, but I'm not a developer. Can you set it up and configure it? Yeah. Which is how the the whole bespoke PDF service basically okay. found its feet. Yeah. Um, and for a long time, that was the primary income for the business yeah. um, or the side project at the time. Um, and that's what spurred on the development, that that income. So that's what drove the growth and drove the need to accommodate um, these different types of user, you know, not just the developer. Yeah. Um, so so what, what spurred on the initial plugin in the beginning? Was it just to, to fill a need that you had for a client at the time? Yeah, basically that was, that was totally it. So I, um, I was developing a site for a client and they wanted um, they had a contact form. They were using Gravity Forms, and they wanted to get a PDF copy of that emailed to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as you do, you go on Google and you do a search, Gravity Form PDF, and there was one plugin that fit the bill partially. Um, it generated a PDF from the entry, but the only way to access that was um, from the admin area. Um, so I didn't have that email attachment capability. Uh, so I had to fork the software. Um, it was called gravity form PDF and basically built a, uh, an interface or a shim that, that would attach that PDF after the form is submitted to a, one of the notification emails. Um, and this was back when gravity forms only allowed you to send two notification emails and then mid notification and a user notification. Yep. <laughs> so that was well before they had unlimited notification emails that you could configure. Yep. Um, and so that was great work. Uh, I got it working. Um, and I, at the time I would have been 21. Oh. So Young, naive, <laughs> think I think I know everything and just, yeah, someone might find this useful. We'll push this out on. Didn't realize you were starting your business back then. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Back then I was just, I didn't know what I was doing. Like in terms of a uh, service, I was just kind of putting feelers out, trying everything, yeah. seeing what stuck. So, um, you know, it, I cast a large net and gravity PDF um was was what i ended up catching and it was a big fish (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) turned into a big fish um so it actually uh when it first released it had a different name um it was called gravity forms pdf extended um you know because it was built off gravity forms pdf so i extended it (laughs) (laughs) makes sense (laughs) yep yeah it was uh (laughs) um it's very very uh just just direct <laughs> to the point. Yes, we extended it. This is what it is. <laughs> um, and and I ended up rebranding it in 2014 to Gravity PDF um, because one, that's a far better name in my opinion. Uh, not as big a mouthful. No, much quicker. And, and two, I didn't want to infringe on Gravity Forms trademark 
um, in the name. I mean, they're, they've been really great about um, those type of things, but, but we don't want to uh, bite the hand that feeds us, <laughs> uh, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, 2014 Gravity PDF was born um, in terms of the, the naming. Um, and then that's when I started taking it seriously in terms of going from a side project to um, becoming a, a full-time In job. 2014? Yeah. Uh, so at the um, end of 2014, I made that basically that decision to start going full-time. And then I phased out because I had a lot of client work. Well, not a lot, but I had a, a consistent client work, SEO, building some websites, maintaining, going on. Um, and so I started phasing those out and, and trying to offload them to uh, different people, reliable people. I think you ended up catching one of my jobs at the I time. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and started focusing on the 4.0 GUI, uh, release, but, um, yeah, Roby actually didn't know that me at that time, um, but he ended up with one of the jobs and we only found that out years later when we were <laughs> talking about it um just to put that timeline in perspective because that was before we actually met um and so yeah i started working on the 4.0 release and it took so long because i'm slowly phasing out the uh the other jobs um and then it was probably the in the last six months that last six months push that was it was full time and um getting it across the door um so I was, I was really proud with that release. Uh, that was, you know, that was when I was starting to do automated testing so I could make it reliable because I pushed out a couple of updates previously that they broke things and um, it was, it was not great getting those emails from users going, oh, this <laughs> update broke something and, and you're like stressing. That was, I was pretty stressed back then. Yeah. Um, uh, and then my, my younger years were. I struggled a lot with the um, with the mental health side of things, you know, stress, anxiety, yeah. depression, um, which I I talked actually talked about at the WordPress Word uh, Port Macquarie. Amazing talk, by the way. If it's if it's not on YouTube just yet, it will be very sh very shortly. <laughs> well, we're all busy, mate. <laughs> I, underst I understand that's it's taken a, two years. There's a bit to, of bit of delay getting yeah. those, all those videos up. <laughs> Well, at least they're going up because we have them. If if I was organising it, it I it still wouldn't be up <laughs> to be honest because I've had a problem the whole time of of this um, running this business of being too much having too much to do, um, and it's only in the last couple of years when I when I um, started hiring a team and getting a team together that that's actually improved substantially yeah um which was basically the uh the the key um key piece that i talked about at Word, wordcamp port macquarie which was which is surviving depression and it was a very noticeable change like before your talk like from a from a friend's perspective just seeing um i don't just the the way you carried yourself at there was a, a vis visible change from the outside. Yeah, well, it, it um, basically, so my first son was born in 2018 and we had WordCamp Port Macquarie in October 2019. So that first year um, with my son, Charlie, um, that was basically, I was working 12 hour days and then coming home and, and we had a lot of problems with Charlie sleeping and feeding. Um, so my wife was run down and I was run down. And, and it actually got to the point where it was like, is this business sustainable? Like it's, it's not working right now. How am I, what do I do? Or do I throw in the towel and, and pick up a day job and, and just work the nine to five and clock out at the end and don't have to worry about everything that goes along with running a business? Or do I, do I try somehow to, to hire people? And, and if I do, who do I hire? And, and do I have the funds to do that? And, and um, it was actually a, 
talk back in. We're talking a lot about WordCamp. And then that um, this was a, a WordCamp Sydney in 2018 where I watched uh, Stephanie Capanella um, talk about high before you drown. So I was drowning. I was drowning in every sense of the word. Um, uh, contemplating suicide, you know that that was that was the the real low point for me. Um, you know, I had this amazing little son, and and all while I'm holding him, I'm breaking down crying because I just I just couldn't keep going on like this. Um, the the days and the um, and the mental health problems and everything else around that. Um, thankfully, I chose swim. And, um, funnily enough, I'm a good swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Um, so I ended up, uh, hiring remotely, um, from the Philippines. Um, so I started with two, two developers, uh, Iron and Debbie, and we've now since then grown that out to, uh, a team of seven, including myself with probably another two hires coming later in the year. Um, so that was a pivotal point in my life because that turned everything around yep. for me. Yep. Um, it allowed me time to, to focus on growing the business rather than doing the day-to-day minutiae of, of the business. Um, and so that's been amazing since then. Um, it's basically turned my life upside down in such a positive way. Yep. Um, and so that was what my talk about in WordCamp Port Macquarie was. This was after I'd recovered, basically. Um, otherwise, I don't think I could have, I could have done it right in the, the midst of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the room, but from everyone I've heard from, they were like, I, it was very, it was a very raw and powerful talk. Did you watch the post video that you've got sitting on your laptop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've watched that. <laughs> well, then, then you, you, you experienced it. I Not did. You. I did. Uh, but I could, like, I could see on some of the people in the audience, like, if I was there, um, I mean, it would have it been a lot, more, a lot more powerful, I think, to be in there. Yeah, it was definitely, a, um, there was a lot of emotions going on in the room. And I... Um, so those of you might be thinking, hang on, this is a word count. What are they doing talking about mental health? Um, so we made the decision to make this a, a, a green event and one that focused on both the people and the tech. Um, so there was a strong focus on mental health. Um, we had a number of talks from, from different people and I wish I looked up their names, local group. Um, do you remember the, the, the two women who came and... The Positify group. Yeah, the Posify group. Yeah, so they did a fantastic talk on the Sunday. Um, it was it was really great um, to to talk about how businesses can can be green and be positive and and have that open lines of communication and and um, keep that that work life balance. Um, and I think considering where we ended up with COVID and people working from home and remotely and things, it was, it was probably a, it was probably a good precursor. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's, it's made a lot more people appreciate um, that, you know, working for yourself and working from home is not, you know, sunshine and rainbows all the time. <laughs> There's a, you've got a, uh, sometimes you can have more pressure on, on yourself, um, you know, especially when you're a, a driven person and, and you're the, you're the one that all of your clients are relying on, like when you're a sole trader or a small business. There's, um, I mean, you don't you don't get trained for the the mental capacity you need to get through that. Um, so that's that's when you just have to lean on each other and and learn from other people's experience. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons you first started the the Port Macquarie meetup is because you were working from home and it is isolated, and you wanted that to make that community connection. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, we're not, especially in our space, we're not, or well, we shouldn't be competitors. There's, there's so much, so much work in our space. And I mean, there's no, there's no locate, there's no location boundaries or, 
you can you can basically work from wherever you want to um and so why not you know use use those other pe- other local people with the same interests to to learn off each other rather than compete with each other yeah definitely and i think as since everyone's been moving more online and and digital with covid that's that's um you can expand that net you know it doesn't have to be just yeah just the locals uh i mean there's digital events going on all over at the moment um so you can get that sense of community yeah um which i think is a bit what what gravity forms had in mind when they put together the certified developer program um it's it, it was about bringing the 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 best third party gravity forms developers together. Yeah. Um, and even though some of us might have competing uh, products, um, the benefits we get from collaborating together and, and making the ecosystem just work together um, where you can install gravity forms and then you can install gravity PDF and, and it'll, it'll work with gravity whizzes add ons um or gravity flow and it just all talks and communicates together really strengthens the whole platform um so much stronger when you work together. yeah yeah definitely um so yeah even though there might be competitors um in the in the same space um we're all we're all just people working together trying to make a living and there is enough pie available that we can all share <laughs> i mean wordpress is massive and it's only getting bigger and bigger um as you said with covid people are realizing that hey we can do it all digital and all online and we can take our paperwork online and capture all our data online and 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 do all this remote work together um so yeah i think i think the the certified developer program it's been a one-year anniversary um and looking back at that there's there's been a bit of accomplishment already uh i mean there's a there's a new tab in the, the Gravity Forms add-on section where you can view the certified add-ons. Yep. And um there's been a, a, a bigger push for for um training both internally with the Gravity Forms team um and the certified developers to so they all know what our software is capable of. But also just educating the users themselves. Um I know I just put together a bunch of videos in your studio, Roby, um, the last couple of months, um, for gravity PDF. So we're, we're expanding on videos and, and I've started basic, but it's going to be moving towards that integration. How can we have those deeper integrations yeah. for the whole platform? Yeah. Um, which is going to be, uh, some of the other two videos I've got organized for the certified developer week. I'm going to be talking with, Ben Ramston from GF Chart. Okay. Um, so we have a uh, we have a reports add-on for GF Chart for gravi- um, that Gravity PDF produces. So that's something we're going to be discussing for uh, what's been tentatively known as CD Week, Certified Developer Week. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm going to talk to Tony Livesey, um, who was an attendee at WordCamp Port Macquarie. Um, who we recently did uh, a project for um, that that leveraged Gravity Forms as add-ons and and Gravity PDF to to develop a cool little um, invoicing solution for her. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we got in the works um, for CD Week, and I hope everyone enjoys it. Um, did you did you have any questions for me, Roby, before we finish up? Um. I'm, I mean, my, my main, main question was, you know, how did it all start? And we've been there. Um, so that was, that was interesting to hear. Um, and, uh, if you were, um, if, if you were to, to do this again, back in, back in 2014, um, What's the biggest thing you would do differently? You know what? Back then, I uh, I was basically uh, twenty fourteen. So I had a I had a girlfriend over a couple of years, but that was basically it. I didn't have any any roots set down. Um, 
It was only after my son was born that I started getting real serious about, hang on, I'm, my wife's off work. I'm the, I need more income to support a family and um, things like that. And that really set a fire under me for, for taking the business more seriously. So before that, I was just kind of coasting along. Um, the business was making decent income. Um, and I was, I was just happy to, to leave it at that. Um, you know, I had ideas of growth but I didn't have the time to pursue it. Um, so if I was going to do it all again, uh, I'd basically build that team up straight away um, and start making a much more serious effort to grow the business. Um, for, uh, for right from 2014 when I'd started taking it seriously. Um, and so that's what I'm doing now, making up for lost time. <laughs> um, growing the team, we've got a number of add-ons planned, uh, Dropbox integration, uh, and all those other Dropbox style services. So you can yep. get, get the PDF into there. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, the end goal is going to be to, to make a, a drag and drop PDF builder, basically. So much like the, the form editor, have a PDF editor, um, but that's a very technical challenge to get right. I can imagine. Um, so we've been focusing on building a foundation. Um, so in the 6.0 release we just did, we we got full support for Gravity Forms 2.5. We bumped the minimum requirements to that version for 6.0 um, because we spent almost eight months working on that release. And the, the key focus there was the user interface, just refining it, making it more accessible, um, all those building block style things. Um, the big, the big uh, feature in that release was a, a brand new font manager. So I, I always hated the old font manager, but it, <laughs> like just, it just worked. It did the, did the job just. Yeah. Um, so this new one's intuitive, it makes sense. It's so much easier to use and manage, and um, and so we'll we'll keep focusing on the um, on the fundamentals um, and those add-ons that are going to drive growth. Um, and I'm probably rethinking how we structure those premium plugins. Um, at the moment, we kind of piecemeal everything. You, you can buy your individual template, and you can buy your individual add-on. Um, but we found a lot of the users coming to our software, they don't know what they need up front. Yeah. So I want to offer more value by consolidating a bunch of our products into one, um, and, and offering a more tiered approach to, um, to packages, much like Gravity Forms does with their, with their core, um, software. And then you, in the first package, you get three add-ons three or four add-ons or whatever the add-on number is. And then the middle package, you get access to a bunch more and then you get all of them. Yeah. Um, with the idea being that, that um, it's users will be able to do more with it. They won't have to make so many decisions up front. Um, they'll be able to explore um, straight away with, with the more potential. Um, so that's kind of where I'm aiming. I haven't actually locked down anything yet. It's just an idea I've been thinking about for a, quite a while. Um, there's still a lot of hurdles, and technical challenges to repackage that and rebundle and think about how we can add more value to, to existing customers. Yeah. Um, but like you said, templates are just so easy and I think we need to do more focus on that area as well. Um, we've got certificates in the works. So... Um, You'll be able to upload your, your certificate and then the quiz, have a beautiful certificate generated with the user's name and the, the course name and things on there. Um, but we've got a, before we can release that, we want to put out an update to our previewer add-on so it looks great in the previewer. Um, just because of the technique we're using, it doesn't look as good in testing right now. So I okay. want to put that out and it's, it all comes back to the foundation. You got to build up that foundation 
um, before you, you aim for the, the top tier stuff that you want to do, which is that, that builder. Um, but that's a long-term goal. Yeah. And then maybe, um, maybe a couple of, uh, of, of demonstrations of use cases for people just spark, you know, spark ideas in their head of, of how they might be able to use gravity PDF in their workflow. Yeah, definitely. And that's going to be part of the, the more in-depth training material we look at producing with the, with the whole ecosystem as a whole, how you, how you've got a problem, what do you need to solve that problem? How do you do it? Um, and we do a lot of that already for our customers. We just don't produce the case studies yet. Um, but it's, yeah, marketing something I want to focus on a lot more as well, um, to, to inform and educate. And for those developers who have the skill set, they can just use a free software and, and use all their skills to build, build that up themselves. Um, but for those that don't, we'll be there to support them um, and be able to deliver projects like that. Um, and then so in the middle, you've got those products as well, that, that premium stuff um, for, for people like you or even the developers who want to save time. Um, so it's a, it's a three tiered approach and I'm, I'm happy with, with going the freemium route. Um, I just want to refine the, the, the products, the, the premium products a bit more, um, to give more value to, to our customers. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Um, and that's all we have time for. Uh, thank you again, Roby, for letting me use your studio <laughs> and taking, taking the time out of your day. I really appreciate it.